We're going to graph 3.1.21, and this is a curve. This curve is a little bit funky. Uh, multiplied by 6 is really not so funky, but it's this exponential multiplied by sine function. So I'm going to run over to Desmos to graph this. And over there, I've already graphed it. Now, this is just a curve graph, but we're going to go between the x-axis and x equals 1. We're about to see that there's no significant left. Uh, it doesn't say if x is equals 1 is a right or a left bound. So let's go look at the graph and think about what makes sense. If I put an x equals 1, that'll be a vertical bar there, the blue. Now, the other one is uh, y equals 0, or the x-axis, which it's already labeled on this graph, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let's zoom in here. There is, over here on the left side, there's all these regions. This function goes a bit crazy, but for example, this region right here that I'm moving the cursor in could be considered a region. But if that's a region, then a little further to the right is another region, and these regions will get larger and larger and larger. So we can't count all those regions. So we're just going to count this one region here as I'm zooming in. And let's switch this. I'm going to go to projector mode. That just makes everything a little bit easier to see. Uh, so here is the intersection point right here. It's nice right at the x-axis. And we're going to assume that this starts at 0, x equals 0, and goes to x equals 1, so that we're just considering this uh, region where I'm moving the cursor right here, this kind of uh, upside down, or I guess an almost cone-shaped region. The top function is that curve. The bottom function is 0. Let's go back. I'm going to do a super fast graph here. Basically looks like that. It's almost a sine function, but not quite. goes from uh, 0 to 1. Now that, um, I didn't actually graph that, so ignore that right there. Uh, but the top function is this f of x that I have. It wasn't labeled as f of x, so I just gave it a label. Uh, the bottom function is going to be g of x equals 0, also known as the x-axis. And we're just going to integrate uh, the big function minus the small function dx from a to b. Now we're going 0 to 1 here. 0 to 1. And we have 6e to the negative x sine pi x dx. OK. So this is going to be our area. OK. so. 3.1 is integration by parts, and if we go to the textbook, I'll go to 3.1, there's the integration of parts formula. The best version of it is right here in the blue box. I'm going to rewrite it over in the, where we're doing our work. Int by parts. So it's integral u dv equals uv minus integral v du. Now it's important to remember that the dv and the du are just single, even though it's two letters, they stand for one thing. Uh, we have to pick u and dv. So let's go ahead and make some choices. Typically you want u to be something that has a nice derivative, but there's, well this 6 doesn't really matter in our problem. I'm going to erase it. Of course you can't erase it because uh, that will get your answer wrong, but whatever you get, I'm going to put the 6 out front. Let's go. There we go. Perfect. So I'm putting the 6 out front, uh, and then I'm just going to cross it out. You can't do this, but uh, you can do this, but at the end, you better multiply it by 6 because I'm going to have 6 times less of the correct answer. Uh, so I'm just going to take it out for simplicity's sake here. Uh, if I wanted to type my answer back in, I'll have to multiply it by 6 at the very end. Um, so I need to pick a u and I need to pick a dv. Now you usually pick a u and a dv such that the derivative of u is nicer and the antiderivative of dv is nicer. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick one part to put for u and one part to put for dv. Now, of course, dv always gets the dx part as well because it gets the derivative part. So what's the antiderivative of sine pi x? 
I'm taking a guess here. We're going to check this in a minute. You don't have a dx in here because uh, I took the antiderivative. Derivative of cosine is sine, so that's correct so far. But the chain rule will give us an extra multiplied by pi. So I have to unmultiply by pi. So we get a 1 over pi out front. All right, du is the derivative e to the x, which is... Uh, it's e to the negative x multiplied by the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. So it's negative e to the negative x dx. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to write this in as integral. I'm going to ignore the uh, bounds until the very end. So we just have u dv equals uv minus integral v du. So on this next line down, all I'm going to do is write the substituted in parts. So I got u and I got b. So it's e to the negative x times 1 over pi cos pi x minus integral v 1 over pi. And let's... I'm going to write the 1 over pi out front because it's a constant. Pi is a letter, but it's also a number. It's a constant number, so I can bring it outside the integral. Okay, so we got cos pi x uh, times v, which, is, oh, that is v, just kidding, times du, which is negative e negative x dx. All right, let's clean this up a tiny bit. Bring the 1 over pi out front, e negative x cos pi x. Two negatives cancel out because two wrongs make a right. Cos pi x e negative x dx. Okay, so right now you should be thinking, okay, genius, it looks worse than when we started. What's going on? Uh, so a lot of times... I'd recommend to just start over and try a different approach. Maybe switch your uh, choices of what's u and dv. However, I have a feeling that if we keep going, uh, we'll be okay. And by that, we're going to make a second integration by parts. And we're going to choose very similar things for u and dv. Uh, now, this part's already integrated. This is what we have to work with here. So I'm going to copy down the first part. Plus, I'm going to ignore that 1 over pi and leave it out front. All right, so my choice, I'm going to let u, just like last time, be the exponential part. So that's going to be u, which leaves dv everything else that's not circled cos pi x dx. All right, antiderivative of cosine is sine pi x. That's my guess. Derivative of sine is cosine, but the chain rule will give us an extra multiply by pi, so we're going to unmultiply by pi. du uh, is a derivative, which is negative e, negative x dx. Just like before, we get that extra negative from the chain rule coming off that. All right. So everything looks complicated. This is perfect, fantastic, which normally it's a bad sign, by the way. All right, so I'm going to skip writing this purple step here. I'm just going to go ahead and just substitute everything in. So it should be V du. Why did I write the integral sign? All right, so what, come on. What we're subbing out is everything that I put inside that box. So I'll start a parenthesis. It's going to get a little ugly in here. Okay, u times v. So that's 1 over pi sine pi x times u, which is e to the negative x minus integral of v du. So v is 1 over pi. Brought that outside sine pi x e minus e minus x dx. Oh my goodness. All right, fun, fun. 
All right, don't give up yet. Copy down the first part. Something crazy is about to happen. You just don't know. You don't know it yet. All right, we're distributing the pi into here. So we have one over pi squared. Okay, minus one over pi squared integral. Oh, I actually plus, because again, two wrongs make a right, right there. So I'm left with e to the negative x sine pi x dx. All right, fantastic. Having fun yet? Hopefully so. So you should be thinking, this is exactly where we started if you look at the top of the screen. I didn't write my zero to one, so let's go ahead and write that in here. Uh, you do also have the zero to one, zero to one here. So I'll write all those in. I skipped all that in these intermediate steps because I thought we had enough to write. Okay, so we're actually gonna make a substitution. If we look at the top, I call this A. So I'm gonna take this out and call it A. We gotta still write all this junk out. I probably sh should start writing on the left. Starting writing on the right is always dangerous because you might run out of room. Okay. Now, what's our goal? Our goal is obviously to do math, but on this one, we're trying to solve for what? Well, we're trying to find A, which is at the top of the screen. Now we have two A's. However, well, I wouldn't really call this a full A. We have one over pi over two A. Let's get all the A's on one side. So we're gonna subtract this to the left. So we have A minus one over pi squared A equals don't want to keep writing this. Oh, somehow cosine lost its pi. There should be a pi in there. I'm going to write this e to the negative x part first. Sine pi x 0 to 1. Okay, we're almost there. All right, right here on the left side, how do we solve for A? My favorite F word, we get to factor. So factor out an A times one minus pi, uh, one over pi squared. All right, I am not gonna plug these values in, you are. Uh, the other thing you're gonna do, I'm just gonna write stuff because you have to do all those calculations and then you're gonna divide that stuff by one minus one over pi squared. All right, isn't that, wait, A equals that stuff over one minus one over pi squared. All right, that was a very exciting math problem. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did.